It's a Friday morning. Welcome on the show. On Fridays, I call it your midweek. Your, your, the weekend is here and rest is near. It's a Friday morning. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Now, um, we'll look at different things. We're looking at the drama, first off, at the Edo State Sports Festival. It's been too much drama, too much embarrass embarrassment, if you want to ask me. And um, I don't know. Now, the Chairman Local Organizing Committee and Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Schweibel, has said that following a discussion with the federal government, the ongoing 20th National Sports Festival will no longer be called off midway into the competition. Now, there had been confusion over the continuity of the festival after the LOC announced that they will discontinue the event, with the federal government also issuing another statement insisting that the festival must go on. However, all frayed nerves were calmed after Schwabu said following an emergency meeting with the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, Minister of Finance and the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, a resolution had been reached and assured that the festival would go on. Now, joining us this morning, um, we have um, a freelance reporter. He's in Edo State. His name is Friday Akwamejiro. Um, he's in Edo State right now. And um, he initially got us, um, we'll be, we'll be seeing that later, he got us um, a vox populi of um, people in Edo State, how disappointed they were initially when the Edo State Festival was called off. They were very disappointed, some in tears. And then he's going to get us at another one where we'll see a happy group of people jubilating about the fact that the games will go on. Good morning, Friday. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> yeah. How did the people in Edo feel when they were told that the games would not continue again? Yeah. The athletes was not really happy. OK. It felt very sad. And I went around to get some of the athletes' opinion right there at the Samogbemuja Stadium. OK. And some of them who spoke to us said the federal government needs to do the needful. That is a bad faith and it's associated with the Justice and Nigeria General that the middle of the National Sports Festival was cut off due to some of due to fault insufficient for the federal government. So what? and uh, the chairman of the local Analogy committee. The person of right on a book called Philip Shaibu, the deputy governor of Edosi, who threatened to shut down the sports festival due to the lack of funds by the federal government to support the festival. So it was a really sad mood for the athletes. And see that at that time, they were really confused and said things will not go away well anymore with such system. Now, Friday. In Benin, because of the people who have come to Benin for the festival, market is really selling in Benin right now. So I'm sure the market women, shop owners will be disappointed when they first said the games would not go on. No market again to sell again now. No. At that particular time, they were started evacuating the property, those who were along the stadium road. Yeah. And I spoke to one of the traders there. He said, this is an opportunity for them to sell. Yes. But if this festival should close, which means they have to go home and they cannot look after their family at that present time. Okay, no Friday, now that the, we have been told the games will continue and that um, everything will go back to normal, how is the situation in Benin now? How are people behaving in Benin now? Are they happy? Yeah, the athletes are so happy. And training has started. This morning at the stadium, a lot of people are coming in doing some exercise and other things to prepare for the next day. As we speak right now, long tennis is taking place right now. Okay, Friday. We'll be expecting your report later about the happiness of people in Edo and the athletes, how happy they are about the continuation okay. of the event. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Friday. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. I hope I have Wale Adekoya this morning already. This mo if I do, hello, Wale, good morning. I don't think I have Wale yet, so we'll go back to the fact that um, it was a massive game yesterday. I saw Manchester United having to dig deep to do well. They were away against Granada. Granada are surprised. Um, they were surprised they are all here, but they played very good football. They dug, you know, when you give a team space to play, it means you're not scared of them. Uh -huh. Granada gave them space, and of course, yes, they played very good football. Now, let's go to um, the match against um, Granada. 
Solskjaer said he had to praise his players for digging deep. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer hailed his goal scorers, Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes, as they beat Granada 2-0 in the first leg of their UEFA Europa League quarterfinals. The United boss was impressed with how Rashford took his 31st minute opener and hailed Fernandes' drive as he won a penalty in the final minutes of the game after they appeared to be caught in the face by Granada midfielder Bryce. The Portuguese duly converted to end a six-game goal drought with one eye, according to his manager, who was also disappointed to see five of his players booked, meaning Luke Shaw, Scott McTominay, and Harry Maguire will all miss next week's returning leg with suspension. I had to, I had to protect Luke, but I think and hope he should be okay for, uh, for the weekend. And Marcus, fantastic goal, uh, great pass by Victor, great run, uh, and uh, the the skill to take the bring the ball down like this. We've seen it uh, a few times before, and um, uh, that's uh, a top top quality goal. It was an um, important goal, of course, the the, the second one there, because uh, one nil lead, losing three players is uh, is not a good position to be in. Um, I don't think we deserve those uh, five yellow cards or how many we got, four or five. Uh, but that's uh, that's happened. Uh, delighted with the with the result, of course. Yeah, it's the same uh, same thing as before. He's not recovered from it, and uh, hopefully, uh, it's not uh, gotten any worse from uh, from this because uh, he lasted. 60 against Brighton, or 70 against Brighton, 65 now, so um, uh, hopefully he's, he's ready. I, I think he should be ready for Sunday, and the goal is uh, exceptional. Now, Mikel Arteta insists his Arsenal side didn't switch off in the final minutes of the first leg of the Europa League quarter-final against Slavia Praha. The Gunners are taking a late lead through substitute Nicolas Pepe, only for Thomas Holes to head home from a 93rd minute corner. Arsenal now must score in the Czech Republic to have any chance of going through. And Arteta believes that could help his team rather than giving to Praha, trying to defend a narrow advantage. Well, it was missing that when you create big chances in Europe, you have to put them. And, um, and I think we made it much more than the result that we got uh, when we made the most difficult thing, which was to, to score the first goal and, and just wait for the last four or five minutes um, to manage the game much better than we did. Um, we failed to do that and then we gave them the opportunity in the corner and they scored the goal which puts the tie in a much um, different position and I think looking back to what happened on the pitch uh, is not what we expected. Tonight? No, I think the players stepped in and, um, and they give absolutely everything. It's a really difficult opponent to play with with the amount of duels, individual man-to-man uh, -man situations that they create. Uh, we managed that really well in, in certain moments. We were much more aggressive today and ambitious to play the game we want to play and we created some big chances and we didn't put them away. Well, I totally believe that we can go there and, and win the match, uh, if not I wouldn't be sitting here. And uh, the mindset there has to be to go there and score goals and, and win the game because we need to score if we want to be through. Well, it was some big decisions to leave some of the players out, but uh, we decided to play the team that uh, we had the best chance to start the game and as well have some key players there to change the game when we need it. And I think uh, once they came on, they um, they had a real impact, which is very necessary in this competition, and they did uh, what we expected them to do. Well, we made them when we believed that it was the right time to do it, and when they changed as well the setup, and we believed that we could help them. And um, I know earlier, it's, uh, whether we should do it before or not, so who knows. I don't think they switched off. I think yeah, we made a bad decision playing the ball into an area where we, we got trapped and from there we conceded the corner. But um, apart from that, I don't think it's the case. Together and win. It's a good point. I think psychologically to go there with 1-0, it's completely different to go with 1-1. Uh, now we know that we have to go there and win the, full, the game. That we have to score goals and we cannot play any any games. We have to go there with the determination to to be an attacking team and, and hurt them. Just after the goal and then at full time, there was a little altercation between a couple of the players. Is that the kind of response you want to see when things like that happen? I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't seen that. Sorry, Mark. It's good that they they talk. We can do it before happening. That's even better. 
Well, I cannot talk with everybody individually every week. Um, we try to be as transparent and communicate with the players as clear as possible um, for them to understand the role of the of the game that they have. And um, when he came on, he showed the right attitude and the right commitment. We don't know. Um, he wasn't able to play today and uh, he will be out, I think, uh, for the next game or two. But uh, we don't know yet. Well, I think it's very different uh, what happened to Spurs or, or tonight. Um, <clears throat> they went with the four strikers in the last few minutes. They were really direct, being um, really incisive, and and they make it hard for us. But I must say that uh, we play one or two balls to areas that we should not play in the last final minutes, and um, that's probably one of the situations why we, we end up conceding a goal. But after conceding the, the corner, they have to score from that corner. So something else has to happen. You don't, you don't have any concerns with your team's mentality and how they defend the lead? With the mentality of my team, no, I don't have any concerns. Arsenal fans, the most patient I've ever seen in my entire life. Later on the show, we'll come back to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, praising his players for digging deep and winning 2 0 at Granada in Spain. But meanwhile, we have Wale Dekoy on the show this morning. Wale, good morning. Good morning, Wale Scott. Good to have you on the show, Wale. I get to. It's my pleasure. Any day, any time. Now, Prof, I had our freelance correspondent in Edo talking about the initial disappointment of the athletes and the Edo people about the discontinuation of the, of the festival. Now, it continues this morning. Everybody's happy and elated in Edo State right now. But let's go back to the embarrassment that cost us initially by holding the government on the juggler, saying, if you don't give us our money, the festival stops. Who is, who is to shame now? He, us or Edo State, really? Ah, well, if that indeed a tough one. Um, the answer to your question is simple. The shame is for all of us. The federal government, the Edo State government, and Nigeria as a whole. Don't forget the name of the event, the National Sport Festival. It's supposed to be a celebration of the best of the day, a culture, a tradition, a celebration, and now they need a platform to make young people come together and we say the best of the day. And for those kids, um, I'm going to say that they have not managed the situation well. Indeed, you have to sympathize with them. Uh, most of the postponement is not they are making. They did all they could to ensure the competition held at all costs, but somehow it couldn't for obvious reasons. Now that the federal government has delayed, I bet you, I tell you, Wale, if they have not gone public, I want to believe that the federal government will still do the same. But going public, you know, I just went online now, I saw the stories all over the places, our uh, collective integrity, our uh, ability as a people, the corporate image, the marketing value, you know, it, it is messy, it's untidy. And um, we shouldn't do that. But the way it is now is that what? Somehow, the competition, competition continues, but it can be better managed. Wally. Now, Wale, um, some people in government, they are claiming anonymity, they don't want to be they don't want their name said. I've called the meeting with the Edo State government clandestine. They said the meeting was planned to hold the government on the juggler, blackmail them, and make sure they pay that money quickly. Did they need to fight that dirty to get their money from the government? How messy Absolutely can that be? Not. Absolutely not. I tell you, you can call that um, uh, insecurity, uh, rascality, if you like. The, uh, the union is uh, a looter in the university, at the university level. It's not the same thing when you hold a lofty position. That way, aside from the state government, do you know what it means to be a governor of a state? In the U.S., where we are copying the democracy, the state governors, the, the, they are the biggest boys. So you expect them to behave, your courage, your mien, your disposition, the aura, the person of the office. I, I, I'm, I'm not happy with that. As an information strategist, I think a good state has no, at least for the sake of the image, the reputation of that competition, you should have done it otherwise. Yes, you use the right word, holding the edgy, 
in the jugular and um, it is not nice at all. Let us just call it pain and pain. Now, Wale, this is the most annoying to me this morning, and I'm annoyed personally. I remember in 2012, I was a presenter and more of a reporter, and I covered the 2012 sports festival in Lagos. <clears throat> now, um, at a point, um, the monies did not come before the tournament started. Agreed, Lagos has money. But the monies came during the event, and nobody politicized the situation. Nobody said because Lagos was this party and the federal government was that party. Nobody. But in Edo now, people are beginning to politicize, saying that it was because we're a different party. Really, party is different. They want to bring politics. In sports, it doesn't rhyme. They don't marry. I don't, they should just stop this, really. Uh, so sad. So sad. And please, Wally, don't say Lagos State has money. There is none of the 33 states in this country that will not have the money to push. How much are we talking about? What's the monthly allocation of the state? What about the IGR and what are you? You, you said it all, it's more of politics over sports. It's more of in personal interest over collective good. It's more about vested interest ahead of um, national peace and um, development. Um, we, we are missing it. It is poor. It's beyond that 90 minutes on the pitch or whatever event you're doing. It's a continuum. It is a culture. It is a lifestyle. So people must learn to live without tradition. When you begin to talk about uh, our money, you can imagine a state governor going public against the minister about holding us money and what have you. I feel they should actually have gone ahead. And if uh, at the end of the competition, I know that they try to oh, you look at the idea. Now, if this should happen in the university, maybe student union, what would we be telling them? We need to learn to manage and says better, the, the, the integrity, you know. Uh, the, indeed, we can do better. We can do better. Mm -hmm. Now, the question we're asking at this juncture now is that um, the festival will continue. It's mm -hmm. continuing at this point. And the government has said, listen, but I heard from someone who refused to come on air this morning. He says the duty of the government, state government, is to ensure that the festival is funded. And the reason why the federal government is involved now is because of the different postponements due to the pandemic. Yes. And that's why yes. the federal government is solely owing Edo state money. If not for the postponement, they won't be owing Edo any money at all. So I heard this morning. No, 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 that, that's a fact. That's a fact. We have the whole state. The whole state comes the LOC. They provide the money, the facilities. The president will come and give you security and other enablement. There's no doubt about that. It's just like hosting. It's a mini Olympic. Now, my, my, my boss would say that he doesn't like a particular behavior. It's called self-entitlement. Now, it's not the fault of the government that the pandemic came upon us. Now, the Edo State government are making it look as if this money must come. I, I, the pandemic came upon us, and you must give us our money. This self-entitlement thing, it's not right. Because the truth be said, it's not the government for the pandemic came. Why are they making it look like it's a do or die affair? You must give us the money. And the government says, there's no money yet. What can they do? Indeed. I don't think, while, while we're not completely absorbing the federal government, because they are going to pay the money, so they should pay. But because two wrongs can never make right, the Edo State government also has looked for other as a whole for the sake of the competition. You should manage you, what you do as, as administrators, you manage the bad situation. It's when you have a crisis that you know if you're an administrator or not. But in this case, they have not. Go online, look at the reports everywhere, website, blog. No, 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 no. This will never, ever happen in the history of the tribe of Nigeria anymore. Now, how do we ensure that these things don't happen again? Because the government did not go and meet Edo State. Edo State came forward by themselves and they said, we want to host this festival. And now they're no, making it look like- No, the solution is simple. Okay, sorry. Uh, go on, go on. The solution is simple, and it's endowment. It's endowment, it's endowment fun. If, if, if the competition is worth one billion, the whole state should be able to cop out 10 billion. So I mean, nine billion will be for the exigency. You want to host Olympics, you don't get to run with the actual budget. 
you have the budget, you have the other budget for plan B. That's what happened. Now, um, I know for one that the Super Eagles in the last few years have been hosted by different states who have offered to say, good, come to our state to play football. We will host national um, Super Eagles, give them their hotels, possibly pay some flight, flight tickets and put them and make sure they play their matches. The government don't give the states any money to help them host this. Yeah. this. So why is Edo State now making so much of a brouhaha? Maybe some states in future might be scared of hosting in the future. <laughs> yes, now. Yes. There, there is no doubt. It, it is a bad precedent. It is ugly, untidy, tacky. You know, it, 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 it's a pity. I never believe things could come this low. You are the host, and you think by noon, the following day, the competition is over. Come on. Now, now. I think um, the, 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 the Federal Minister of Sport, who has the, 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 the franchise itself, should um, sit up and uh, package the hotel requirements so that this will never happen again because this is a colossal disaster from a state. Now, Cardinal State has stepped forward and said, listen, we want to host the next sports festival. Um, His Excellency Nasser El Rufai has stated that and he said, um, we will host and we'll host um, a better tournament than this. Um, what do we do to ensure we don't get em embarrassed like um, it happened in Edo State now? Well, preparation, early preparation, I, I think that that 2022 should start today, now, by the whole state. The Cardinal State government has all the power, the time, everything to continue that hosting today. I beg your pardon to initiate the process of hosting today. I'm talking about finance, the funding. The budget should be made, budget A, then the second budget that is capable of taking care of the first budget. That's the way to go. Okay, so um, thank you very much for, okay, before we go on the show today, um, Arsenal played yesterday in the Europa League. And um, most people, most Arsenal fans I know are all over the place shouting, why did you start Lacazette? Why did you bring our Boomerang early enough? When he came in, the game changed. What is the problem of selection by Mikel Arteta? He obviously has a selection problem. Mm. At a point, I always support the coaches that they, they say what we don't say. Sometimes in my lifetime, I said, no, most of these guys, they, all, they get it wrong. And the trainer is neither here nor there. Perhaps if that last minute they collide that not come, we may not be talking about this. But I think it's a matter of a mentality. For a team to consider goal, all the 11 players, they have a part, a role to play in it. How did the ball get to the half of Arsenal? What about the back four? What were the attackers doing? Did they cover enough? What about the mentality, the philosophy, the ideology, the mental alertness of the guys, tactical discipline, that look, this game is rounding up. What do we do? Close your, if you are closing the spaces, if you are man marking, you must have an ideology of how you kill games. Champions League is about goals, goals, goals. And unfortunately, uh, they, they drew our home. But then, luckily for them, they have another day to... And then this costly, dangerous. Okay. okay. Before mistake. I go to before I go to Olegono Sokshia this morning, um, Wale, I'm going to ask you a question. I'll take a short break and then take a, a, a short track and then come back and talk to you. My question is, do you agree with players like Serena Williams, um, Megan Rapinoe, those players who are women who say, listen, we go through the same stress you guys go through on the field of play. Women must be paid same amount of money men get paid in sporting events across the world, across board. They believe women should have equal rights and equal payments with men in sports. Well, I do, absolutely. Uh, you, you must know that you have to judge an individual based on the faith value. When you mention tennis, for instance, the women actually bring to the sport other attractions that you never get from the men. 
and then the issue is this: even if football, in football, the glamour and um, women football may not be the same as the men, but the question is, it has to be judged by the value of the sport because they also provide the same entertainment value. So I support the fact that women should be paid as men. Tennis has started it, heavens it don't fall. So what's we'll sort of the good? Okay, why is why stay with us? Don't go anywhere yet, stay with us. This woman has been oh. fighting for women's rights for so long. Now, US Women's National Soccer Team for her name is Megan Rapinoe. She fired back at yeah. Warriors forward Draymond Green, saying the basketball player should have been better educated on the issue of gender pay equity when he accused female athletes of only complaining. Rapinoe and her fellow U.S. national teammates became leading figures for pay equity in the United States after getting into a public battle with their federation over wages and playing conditions in the run-up to the team's successful World Cup bid in 2019. She lambasted the recent NCAA basketball tournament organizers for offering inferior facilities to the women's teams and green for saying female athletes are not leveraging their position to force companies into increasing the revenues of women's leagues. The U.S. women's soccer team began their quest for a fifth Olympic gold medal in Tokyo this summer. So that's really what I have to say about Draymond Green. I think that it's really unfortunate in the position that he's in. Having all of the resources that he has and the ability to have a much more educated opinion that he just hasn't, and then dragged all these other people in it by by tagging them in it obviously and and speaking about it at a time when you know the the tournament was going on and all that we saw with the lack of investment with the lack of resources with the lack of funding like that's just really frustrating that that's the take that that you have <laughs> i mean of course i do i think everybody has a responsibility to do whatever it is that they can to you know make the world a better place we're talking specifically um, about these, you know, Jim Crow 2.0 voters. Megan Rapinoe, always fighting. Now, Wally, that was Megan Rapinoe. And then what Greenwood said that annoyed that was, you girls don't bring enough sponsors. You girls don't bring enough to the table. You are only just always complaining. However, let me come to Nigeria. Our female national team football are doing much better than the male team. Let's go to the U.S. The U.S. team are defending champions, gold, at the Olympics, women. They are defending champions. They've just won the Women's World Cup. They are doing much better than the men. How much better can you do? What do you mean by sponsors? When they are winning, U.S. male team are not winning anything now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, really. You see, it is as simple as that. There is no basis, there is no justification for the disparity in payment. The, if you look at it scientifically, the women folk, being, being a woman, being female, is not a joke. You may want to talk about maybe the power. You consider the peculiarity of being a woman, the monthly top, child bath, motherhood, and many other things. And in spite of all of these, they can still hold their own and give us a competition we love. Sport is entertainment. And if you do a comparative analysis which across the sport between men and women, you will take more boxes for the women than for the men. So there's no to, justification to thank, for paying men more than women. I want to thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Wale Dekoya, thank you very much. Prof is what you call him. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Anytime. After thinking hard about hanging on another year to compete at the COVID-19 delayed Tokyo Olympics, four-time gold medalist gymnast Simon Biles might stick around for another three years for the 2024 Paris Summer Games. Winner of the coveted all-round crown along with teams floor and vault gold at the 2016 Rio Olympics, Biles had given every indication that the Tokyo Games would be a competitive swan song. But a 24-year-old American hinted during our appearance at the Team USA Virtual Media Summit as she might put off retirement and try to compete in Paris in an individual event such as the floor exercise, where she's a five-time world champion. The Olympics, delayed one year by the COVID-19 pandemic, begin July 23rd. On the topic of COVID-19 vaccine, Biles said she had not gotten a vaccination yet, but plans to get her shots as soon as she's eligible. 
right now, you know, we're four months out. I'm feeling pretty good, pretty confident. Um, all of our training has geared us for this moment. So I'm just super excited for the journey. Honestly, right now, my main focus is the Olympic Games. And then after, I have a tour that we've put together. So I'm really excited to go around the U.S. Um, with all of the girls and do that 36 city tour. And then afterwards, I'm not so sure because Cecile and Laurent are from Paris. And so they've kind of guilted me into at least being a specialist and coming back. But, you know, the main goal is 2021 Olympics first tour. And then we'll have to see. Um, and then on vaccinations, I have not been, but once it's my time, I would love to be vaccinated. And I think it's good for athletes to become advocates for that so we can stay safe and healthy and we can have a good game. Um, and I think it'll be really exciting once the time comes. So definitely approve of being vaccinated. Simone Biles. Well, Plus Plus and Plus TV Africa on a Friday morning. Thank you very much, Friday, Apple Majoro, of course. Thank you very much, Wale Adekoya. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. The weekend is here, and rest is me on a Friday morning. Oh, my name is Wale Scott. Join us on Monday, same time, same station. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.